Hello, it's Rick DiClemente with Astrology Unplugged on October 13th. Good to have you, and we'll be here for 90 minutes um, with all of our different astrologers and people interested in the subject. Tonight's subject is about flow, and later on I will get into talking about uh, Trump's shirt. Uh, what I mean by flow is this. When I work with clients, and I'm sure a lot of you do, the number one thing is to get them unblocked and get them flowing again. And as I've gone through the many years of reading charts, I don't like to talk about the car and the wife and the money and the kids. I mean, and there's a level of astrology where you can do that micromanaging if you want, but there's a macro level that's much more efficient uh, and true if you get the person flowing in their life, things start to work out. And if they're not flowing, that's when things stop. So as I've read, I've just gotten more and more pointed towards that subject, which makes me have to work with people uh, analyzing their past and finding out where they got blocked and how, because you can't get unblocked till you recognize your blockage. So, we're going to talk about flow by sun sign. Hello, hello, Mark and Julie. Hello there. Um, so when we talk about each sign, some signs have a natural affinity to flow and some don't. Now, when I talk about a sign, I'm talking about the pure sign. I'm not talking about if you're in Aries and you got five planets in Pisces, or I'm not talking about a Pisces got five planets in Aries. I'm talking about the straight archetypal sign. So keep in mind that it may not sound like you. Okay. In my mind, you can argue with me if you want, but to me, the epitome of a person, and I think you might agree, you know, those days in your life when you get up and you're just flowing with things. It's unbelievable. You're not even thinking much. It's clicking. Everything's happening. Magic around you. Synchronicity. Those are the wonderful golden kind of days and where we're, we can get into philosophy if we want to. You're, you're running in sync with a bigger intelligence that's larger than you. So I think if we all post that as our goal, I think you can understand tonight a little better. Does this make sense to you? Okay, good. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go straight to the zodiac, and uh, you'll see how it works. It's very interesting, actually. Um, with the Aries personnel, the Aries people, very fiery people, and their basic instinct, this all comes from our book, but the flow specialty is the focus for tonight. Aries people are, I got something I want to do, I'm going to go do it. If you're in my way, I'm going to push you to the side. I don't have to be mean about it, but just get out of my way so I can go. Not, not please get out of my way. Just get out of my way because I want you to get out of my way because they got things to do. And they're not, they're actually usually very kind and pleasant people, but they got things to do. So they fire ahead. And this is what the beginning of the zodiac has to have. The first sign is a fire sign. Flick the bick. Let's get this place going. Is that flow? No. Why? Because that's self-directed. That's self-propelled. That has nothing at all to do with being part of a larger intelligence behind you that is in the zone. So what, what Aries can do nicely about the flow is they usually don't get hung up, they usually don't get stuck, they usually don't go backward and fret things. Almost all Aries people have a very innocent, uh, bright light in their eyes. It's very childlike, very um, innocent type of look. So they don't like complications, they don't like getting stuck. So in that sense, they're moving forward, but that's not really flowing. Flowing has to come about when you are surrendered to the larger force behind you. You hear 
You hear ball players talk about it. You hear skiers talk about it. Hi, Suzanne. You hear um, athletes talk about it. You can certainly see artists talk about it, musicians when you're in the flow. So if you're in your own dynamic where you're the only one in your world, then how are you going to flow? How does one person flow? Around themselves? So there's the problem with Aries, and there's the power of Aries. Now, I have found, and this is wonderful, I have found that many, many times you take an Aries and put a lot of Pisces in their chart, and these people adapt to water just beautifully. Um, and the reason for that is because Aries is very uncomplicated. And Pisces is the most fluid, and V is the goal of the zodiac to be no self there and you're just flowing. So when they have a mixture of Pisces, they, they can do very well. You'll notice through this discussion that the earth signs are the most troublesome. They are the ones that have the most difficulty with flow. And I is one. Okay, Taurus, next. Taurus can have a lot of trouble with flow. Now, they can be very pleasant people. They usually are very pleasant people. Some say it's because they're ruled by Venus. But that's different. That, they know how to pleasure themselves. They know how to make a nice meal, turn on nice music, have soft cushions. They know how to go in the harbor hole and put their feet up. But that's not really flowing either because that's still staying in a relatively small world. So you can't blame them, but Tauruses, if you can give a Taurus other planets in their chart that give them a universal connection, then usually they can flow pretty well. But one of the big problems with Taurus is Taurus is usually unyielding. They don't like outer influences. A lot of times when I see a Taurus person, or I see a lot of Taurus energy in the chart, the event hits here, and the experience is six months later. The planet hits here, and three months later, it gets through. That is normal for them. You cannot expect an event to hit the event to happen right at the same time. They cannot allow it. They cannot have things happen suddenly. Things have to grow on tour slowly. They can't handle it. They don't want it. They, things move slowly. They're exact opposite of Aries. And when they take something and they absorb it, then they plant it and they conclude it in their vineyard. Yeah, fine. But they're not a fluid sign. A fluid sign is take it as it comes. Take it as it comes. Now, Taurus can be very fluid, but when it leads them into a bigger realm of including others, usually they get nervous, run back home. Tauruses are usually very content to be in the hobbit hole by themselves or one or two other people with the fireplace going and the, the pipe going, and it's that simple. So it's not that they're anti-flow, it's that it's one of the most stuck signs of the zodiac if you don't watch out. If you look at some of them, some Tauruses are so stuck that they're just not going to get past it because it's the flip side of what their nature is, and their nature is to bore down in and plant themselves. Well, if you're planting yourself, that's automatically non-fluid. You see the point, and every sign has its plus and minus. They can all be beautiful people, beautiful signs, but we're talking about flow. Gemini. Now, Gemini, whew, whew, they're very, very fluid in ideas and changing their mind. And look at Trump, I mean, changing every second. And they can be very um, novel with their thoughts and, and uh, intrigued by what's on the other side of the fence. That's what Gemini is all about. What's on the other side of the fence must be better, must be better, must be better. So the problem with Gemini, they're not fluid because they're living in the future. This is the sign 
that I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. Why are they bored? Because they're in the future. They're always thinking that what's next and when I get to here and now, that can't be good because something's better over here. They're so curious that they, the, what's next has to be better so they don't value what they have like Taurus does and therefore they get bored. So you got to have something in the Gemini's chart to slow them down. And you can, depends on how the whole chart is made up, but it's not really fluid. It's really um, intrigued by ideas. They're intrigued by ideas, but they're not really a deep sign unless Neptune is strongly placed or Pluto, etc. You follow me so far? Okay. Remember, I'm being very general. I'm not favoring anybody. I'm telling you how it is. Cancer, very complicated sign. Very, very complicated sign. Now, they're a water sign, and they're the first water sign. So you might think, hello, Susan. You might think that they are a fluid sign, but not necessarily. There are two types of cancer. I'm not going to say this hard coded, but basically, when you have a cancer with a moon in Sag, a moon in Leo, where the sun is up near the top of the chart, these cancer personalities are usually stronger, more independent than the other cancers with the sun down below who are more dependent. And if you're dependent, you certainly can't flow. I can't flow if I'm holding on to a rock. And the prerequisite to flowing is letting go, and there's no sign worse. Maybe Taurus. Taurus and Cancer are not good at letting go. Neither is Capricorn. Letting go means letting go and trusting. And if you're having a miserable time rubbing your forehead and shaking your head like Amy, it's okay, because we still love you. It's all right. By the way, you know why people do that? When they're stressed, there's, I don't know the exact name. There's a gland. There's a gland here that when you push on it, it, excre it excretes. Uh, what the heck's it called? The pituitary. Yeah, but it excretes a chemical that makes you calmer. So that's why when you're oh, doing it all night, you're going, oh. I mean, your body knows what to do. It's always right there. It's not over here. It's over here. Okay, so cancer, a wonderful sign. I did have a friend one time, long ago, a cancer woman, who told me, I've gone all day without thinking a thought. I was just stunned, because I got a lot of Aquarius in me. My mind never shuts up. And she had a beautiful nature. She was very, very fluid. Okay, but you get her outside the comfort of that little rock that she hides under, the little family circle, and they're not fluid at all. You've seen it with cancers. You can see it with Nancy Reagan. They're often categorized as being snobs. Sometimes they are. A lot of times they're not, but they can be very tough on the outside. And it's not because they're trying to be a snob. It's because they got that hard shell protecting that very delicate inside. And one thing you will not get past, cancers are delicate inside. It's the, the crab is soft on the inside. So how does the cancer flow when it needs to stay in the nest? That's what cancer is about. Staying in the nest. Developing the nest. So that's why flow is hard for them. If they get a well-balanced chart, just like anybody, they can just be beautiful, especially because they're the first water sign, and water is all about flowing. And when you deal with cancer, like I had one today who, who had moon opposite, moon in Pisces opposite Saturn and Virgo. And in Elke, I just took the chart and put it to the side. I knew that the whole talk would be about her moon in Pisces opposite Saturn and Virgo. I looked in the past life and I saw all the things there. 
But the moon in Pisces is all about flowing beautifully. The same chart that, same sun moon that um, Helen Keller has had. But the Saturn in Virgo is up there. Stop it, fix it, quit, quit whining. You don't feel that way. Be, be, get those feelings under control. Put them in the holster. Let's get back to work. So that moon in Pisces is getting overwhelmed by the Saturn and Virgo. So it all depends on the whole chart. But Cancer is not made to be a, a fluid sign, a flowing sign. They can be wonderful. Now, when you're with a Cancer, usually inside their house or with their family, they're beautifully flowing all around and taking care of everybody and have some more mashed potatoes. Let me fill up your drink. Honey, let me get you a pillow. I mean, they're really domestically wonderfully, usually. But that's, and you can see the soul, in a sense, is getting to bigger and bigger environments. So within their safe confines, they can be very fluid. Now remember, there are exceptions to everybody. Now, you got Leo the lion. Okay, that comes fifth. Well, what do you think about a roaring lion? Is that fluid? Real good question. Usually the fire signs aren't very fluid. They're busy putting out, putting out the fire, putting out, excreting fire. So what is it? What is at the heart of the Leo? The heart of the Leo is self-expression because it's proving itself he gets that feedback it's insecure which it doesn't let anybody see and it's expressing itself to get feedback becomes more secure so that's not really flowing in a bigger realm either leo's all about their domain their domain their king of the jungle now, this is general, of course, but you're going to see eventually where the only sign that really has built-in fluidity is Pisces. And even they have difficulty. So what happens with the Leo? The Leo gets stuck, and I learned by writing The Exquisite Zodiac, I learned what I really am convinced of. Many, many Leos live in a finite world. This is one of the big problems with Leo's. They won't say it, they don't even realize it, but there's a finite world. There's only so much attention. There are only so many vice presidents. You'll never hear of jealousy in, in the workplace more than with Leo, because there's only so much attention, only so many people can get a raise, and they're very competitive. And it's because they think they're in a finite world. It's not true. But this is where it can come from. Now, you, on the other hand, you get another Leo who is more magnanimous and they're not uh, so concerned with their self-value. They can be very big. Now, we come across what's probably the worst sign there is about fluidity. And that's Virgo. And I'm going to reiterate again, and if you're a regular partner here of Unplugged, you're going to hear me talk about this a lot because I've learned after years of teaching how important it is. And there's a chapter in the book. There's a chapter called The Six Polarities. And it really is critical that you understand the six polarities, and that really launches you and liberates your ability to translate. You really have to understand that one is an I sign and the other one opposite is a we sign. Another sign is an I sign, one is a we sign. You have to get this in your mentality. It's critical. So when you talk about Virgo, the opposite is Pisces exact opposite in nature and it's the epitome of opposition virgo is about the self but not selfish self-oriented it's about getting the self ready getting the self cleaned up buffering the self buffing the self perfecting the self what's different 
calling a spade a spade, black and white, exclusivity. Pisces is about let it go, let it flow, include everybody, non-discriminate. Discrimination, non-discrimination. So it's really critical that you understand that. And you'll see so many, so many Virgo men end up uh, marrying cancer women or they'll end up marrying can uh, Pisces women. It's very common and it's not compatible, it's complementary. Very important you understand the difference because a lot of times people will come to you and ask you about what sign's compatible. Don't answer the question. Don't answer the question because they're full of all these magazines. Well, I thought Gemini was my best sign. Don't answer the question because, as you know, charts are complicated. But understanding Virgo Pisces is really critical. Now, here's the problem with Virgo. Now, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Virgo, its power and its nature is to stop something, find out what's wrong, and fix it. And they're really good. Thank God I'm going to take my car to a Virgo mechanic. And they pride themselves on, mm, that's a problem. And they're right. Yay. But they need to leave their work at the office. Virgo energy does not work well with Venus. It doesn't work well with the moon. It just doesn't. They have to, they have to even work at flowing. They have to work at not working. Everything's on a work schedule. So, number one person that comes to see me without a doubt, Virgo females. Number two, Aquarian females. Way ahead of everybody else. So I started to notice, and I know Elke, who's so sophisticated in her medical research, um, the number one thing you will see in astrology as far as medical is intestinal problems with Virgos. Problems in the intestines, Crohn's disease, colitis, all that stuff. It's very common, and I'm going to say easily over three fourths of them. That's a lot. So I asked myself one day, why is this happening? Because on the other side, Virgos are very pure sign. They're beautiful souls. They have, they have perfect complexions. They appreciate life that was given to them. So why are they having this trouble in the intestines? I mean, obviously the intestines is sim symbolic of something flowing through the system and being eliminated. We oftentimes have trouble with uh, elimination during Pluto times. Thank God we're in one now. And that has to do with holding on and not releasing. That's different. So I finally realized that what the Virgo's doing is this. Here's an assembly line, right? Here's a conveyor belt. I like running my finger across the screen. It kind of, <laughs> kind of works. <laughs> it's flowing. Stop it. Fix it. Let it flow. Stop it. Fix it. Let it flow. Stop it. Fix it. Let it flow. Stop it. Fix it. What do you think your intestines are going to do when you're giving orders like that? Let it flow, stop it, fix it. Let it go, stop it, fix it. That's what their mind is doing. And the problem with Virgo is when something's wrong, fix it. And what they commonly do is look for something that's wrong. And that's when you're going to find it. And that's the no-no. Whereas Pisces is, I didn't see anything wrong to do. Duh. And that's when the nervous system gets the signals and it creates spasms. Exactly. And speaking of spasms, I've got, I've got transiting Mars right now. Right now, transiting Mars is inching up on Pluto on my ascendant and my natal Uranus is right here tonight. So I've been and mine is, like, mine is like two days. It's like my, my Uranus is squaring my sun. And yeah, the nose. And the nose. <laughs> You better plan on being awake all night and don't fight it and accept the lucidity download. 
I already have like palpitations like crazy. Yeah. I get them up. I get them during Uranus times too. It's very oh. common. So what happens is, whether you believe it or not, I mean, this is such an exciting field that I'm getting into. I'm really becoming less of an astrologer and more of a naturalist. I don't even know what to explain. I think the next book I'm working on, instead of seeing it as the intimate zodiac, it's going to be more like, I didn't tell you this, Liza, it's going to be more of a title like Astrology, Astrology Synchronicity and Timing, something like that because we're finding incredible things, or astrology, synchronicity, and miracles. So it's time to transcend it and bring it all together. So anyhow, what I'm saying is what the mind says, the body says, okay. The body tries to do what the mind says. I got a friend, I got a friend that got real mad, I'm not gonna go into detail. He got real mad at the TV, and I'm not going to go into detail. And he said, I don't want to see that anymore. He got really mad at an emotion. Emotion is the building block. He saw a certain thing on TV. I don't want to see that anymore. I woke up next day, his right, right eye, his right corner was detached. Now he's blind. His body says, well, what can I do to help you? You don't want to see it? How about that? So but people reacts instantly. Yes, ma'am. But people that get they're really angry at somebody and they get pissed off, they get a bladder infection. Sure. They so do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They right. do. Yeah. yeah. So the body's listening because the body's nothing but the extension of the mind. So anyhow, when you see the verb of going stop, start, stop, start, you ruin the flow. Now another thing that's really critical. Virgos can't stand, usually, somebody that's just laid back on letting things flow. They can't stand it, letting it flow, because them, they're a bum. They're a bunch of bums. They're not working hard. They're not working and straining and stressing to work hard. You know, picture a guy sawing with a saw. That's Virgo, proving myself with my saw. Damn it, I'm working hard. I'm self-made. Now, they're two kind of fluid people. We'll get to that with Pisces. They're the ones that are flowing where they really are fluid and it's a beautiful thing. Then there are the bums, the bums who are just lazy. And that becomes a critical problem with Virgos. Virgos, you try to tell them to relax and they're busy scheduling their, they're scheduling their sex schedule while they're vacationing in Hawaii. Well, from 9.07 to 9.15, honey, I'll be up there in the room. Instead of getting back on the lounge chair and enjoying the sun and relaxing, Virgos have a hard time doing it. And I'll remind you, here just came our Virgo. Hi, Nancy. Hi. I have a nice Virgo video that I've not checked out thoroughly yet, but I, I will release it to you if you need uh, to see it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it, it was a, a video I did two months ago called Virgo women are really doing well. And what's happening with them, they're getting past this robot nature. They're getting past this strain, be productive. They're, letting, they're starting to let things be. And I think that's because they, notice I'm talking much more about them than other signs. This is significant. I think that's because Virgos are obsessed with being in sync with the goddess energy. I mean, look at the picture you've always seen of the Virgin. That's the goddess energy. It's not sexuality, but Virgos love being in sync with their mission. And when they come to me and they're out of sync with their mission, they're very upset people. So you got to get the Virgo, and this is very tough, to stop fixing things and learn to relax in order to flow. And that's just not easy. Because when you tell them, they'll say, we tell them something's wrong, they'll say, what's wrong, and I'll go fix it. Well, that's not how flow fixes things. Flow fixes things by dissolving it in the water and letting it just dissolve. Very complex sign. I got a chat message. Go, 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 I'm more likely to be ADHD. 
Well, ADHD is usually reserved falsely for Gemini. Um, it's not so much that, Amy. Um, Virgos have this relentless drill sergeant on their back to be productive. I took this Pisces, I took this cancer woman today with the moon and Pisces off of the Saturn and eventually she started talking about, well, you know, it's like you're going to get much done. I said, I don't want to hear about what you're going to get done. I'm talking to you and you're the cancer. I want to know how you feel. And she just wasn't used to answering that. She was so much used to in the past life chart showed that she just had to keep working, keep working, keep working. And that's what was abusing her emotions. It wasn't the people around her. It was her own habits that she picked up through lifetimes. So the Virgos, God love them. Well-intentioned people, which is why we like Bernie so much. We see that high Virgo in him. It's just not their nature to be fluid. But they're definitely making progress. They're getting better and better at it. Now, this is really tricky. We slip across to the second half of the Zodiac and we go into Libra. Now, we all see Libras, how smooth they are, very socially smooth. There's your total answer right there. They're totally socially smooth and flowing, but that's it. Put an umbrella over it. Libras do not understand anything beyond society, unless the rest of the church shows it. They're not interested in spiritual stuff. They're not interested in um, um, transcending the self, unless Neptune is strongly placed. And you'll see those Libras. And even then, they're very, very pleasant and very fluid. But Libras are not fluid in the largest sense because they're not really picking up what Holy Spirit is saying to them or what, uh, what the universe is subtly trying to feed to them. Libras are very, very smooth and tactful, and they land on their feet. Think of every Libra you know. Almost everyone has a beautiful mate and has a good job. Almost everyone. They're very smart. They know how to play the social game. And almost everyone, the, the gap between girlfriends is about one day or four hours. It's not six months or a year. It's, it's they leap off one, one, one pan into the next pan. They're, they're in great need of relationship. So you could say that they're fluid and they, they really do know how to relax and let things be, but it's not at a universal level. Now we get into heavy duty. We turn up the tea, the tea kettle and it starts whistling. Right, Jennifer? Woo! And then we get into Scorpio. And Scorpio, you know, is really a misnomer in the zodiac that Libra is the sign of relationship. No, Scorpio is. Libra is a sign where we come to meet somebody. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Mm, kiss them on the hand in the formal way. Their, their gowns are nice and beautiful in the ballroom. But Scorpio is about really merging with the other. I'm not going to get into all the nasty stories about Scorpio because they're way overblown. Scorpio can be fluid but usually not because the stormy sea. You just don't see smooth Scorpios. They're so passionate. It's almost like the Pluto rulership. It's almost like they're not content unless the water's are boiling. They're a very defiant sign. They, they need things to be exciting and passionate. And that very passion makes the water boil. And when it's boiling, you don't feel like flowing much. Now, what you find with Scorpios are great moments, great periods of flowing, even way beyond um, transpersonal. But then other times they're down there crushing their head together, holding and trying to figure out what's wrong with the relationship. And that drives them nuts because they're based upon the success of that relationship. So, 
I think Scorpio, we've made a leap so far. It's probably the most fluid of the first eight. What do you think, Jennifer? I think it's kind of hard for uh, for Scorpio to be fluid. What do you think? Um, I, again, it depends on the rest of the chart. I mean, you know, it, it's hard to say. I mean, there are some really stubborn Scorpios out there. Yeah, true. Um, you know, but I think too, like the higher end of Scorpio, you know, when you get to the Phoenix aspect of it, I feel like that would be a more fluid state of Scorpio yeah. because they're able to see things from way up high and they can, you I know, think that's very good. And I noticed that you're in Ocean City and you, you write a lot about walking near the water. Um, I think that's really brilliant because it's not because they're necessarily at a higher level. What's happened is they've transcended the temptation to take from the other. The low Scorpio, Scorpio is about your light plus my light and one plus one equals one million, baby. But there's so many Scorpios that when I'm with you, I want to take from you. Therefore, you get the struggle and you get the jealousy and you get the ownership and the codependency and all that stuff going on. So I think the Scorpios who can transcend that stuff can become very fluid. I mean, one of the most fluid people I've ever met is a Scorpio. Uh, but I'll guarantee even watching her in the realms of working with Jesus at very high levels, She's still going through stormy travails. It's just the nature of passion. How can you how can you sit on your inner tube and, so, and have great passion? How? Doesn't happen. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it just it's by na by nature flowing means surrender. And Scorpios are really not one to surrender. Scorpios are fighters. Their original ruling planet was Mars. Mars, right? My okay, father, but still, you, you, yes, ma'am. My father was a very flowing Scorpio. Oh yeah, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Tell, he really tell was. us about it. Well, um, that that's it. He was flowing. He just kind of went along above what was happening, and some. Things were happening because my mother was a Libra, and um, it wasn't always easy, but he flowed. Well, that's really nice. That's a really yeah. nice thing. You do see it. You do see it. Uh-huh, um, yeah. It was a good way to start life. Yeah. Well, now you notice that as we get down the Zodiac, it's getting, it's getting easier and easier. Next, we jump into Sag. Now, Sag is a very confusing symbol. And you have to really use your words wisely. Sag is very free footing, but it's not flowing. Sag is more loosey and I don't get caught up in stuff because it's more, eh, that's sad. If sad is anything, eh, I don't even know what word to use, eh, don't worry about it, eh, what the heck? Well, if you call that flowing, I don't. I mean, you're not going to get caught on any rocks, but you're sure not in sync with a higher power that flowing has to do with being one with a higher power. But you certainly can get a very fluid Sag. Yeah, they're fun loving. And that, that's the thing about Sag that I think really keeps them from flowing is it's got to be like Scorpio is bubbly. Um, Sag is fiery and exciting. It's fireworks. So when you got fireworks going on, it's kind of hard. They don't really want to relax and surrender. They want to more or less let off the fireworks. Now, two signs left. Three signs left. My sign. One of the worst. Capricorn. Us and Virgos are probably the two worst in general in the zodiac for flowing. Why? Because we don't trust. If you don't trust, you're not going to flow anywhere. Who's going to get on a rubber tube and lay back and go down the river and just close their eyes and see where they end up? Not a Capricorn. Uh -uh. <laughs> we 
we got to make sure where we end up. And Eliza and I, we live right next to a river with all these rocks. We haven't been in the river yet. <laughs> well, it's because, like, Virgo is fixed. Capricorn is make sure. That's it. I'm starting a revelation. I want the name removed. I want the name changed to make sure. Because it's everything about it. Completely, 100% explanation of Capricorn. Making sure. Well, Virgo's, what's wrong, fix it. Capricorn's making sure. Well, if you just laid back, you'd flow around a rock. But if you, you know, if you stiffen up, what do they say about drunks? That they fall down, they don't get hurt because they're fluid, right? And the rigid one falls down, breaks everything. Same story. Now, as Capricorn gets older, they start surrendering more. They start to understand more. They are a reverent sign. And many of them have outer planets. Um, so they can pick up energy from Neptune and from Pluto. But usually Capricorn is not fluid because they got this myth that they can control things. And it's a myth because you can't. Not possible. Every spiritual book I've ever read, you end up finding out that the guy in the front seat is really a child with one of those child wheels. You know the little driving car where the wheel goes round and round? Well, you're in the front. You think you're driving, right? And you're all busy in your story thinking you're driving. But you find out later on the guy in the back's been doing all the driving all along. Brilliantly. So that's what fluidity means, is you're aware of what he's doing, and you don't care, and you're up front playing and relaxing. Okay, now we get into a really complex size. Think about this one today. Maybe I'll let Liza answer. <laughs> what do Aquarians do? Now, Liza is Aquarian, and she's very fluid, but she also has very strong Neptune prices. Uh, typically, Aquarians are not fluid. They are so busy chasing mental titillations, they get obsessed with things mentally, that they're chasing the next puzzle, the next quantum puzzle. And I don't think they're that concerned about flowing. They're very universal. But the biggest thing that keeps Aquarians from being fluid is this. They're made to be an individual. And by default, when you're individual, you're cut off from the source. So you can't flow. That's the problem. And that's why it's the final lesson in the exquisite zodiac the bridge between Aquarius and Pisces, where the Aquarius is the sign of the ultimate self and it has to be surrendered to the next sign. Pisces, which is where the story ends. Good, then we get to talk about Trump, because I'm sure you've all gone an hour without him. How in the hell do we do that? <laughs> Welcome to Astrology Unplugged, and we're unplugged. What's that mean? That means we're flowing with whatever comes to us. Right, Amy? Right. In the, in the, winter, in the winter, Amy has promised she's going to have the fireplace on at all times. For all of us. <laughs> um, Pisces, flowing, yes, maybe drowning. Very misunderstood. And if anything, this book explains deeply it's how Pisces works. Because this book was entitled in the working stage Pisces, the ultimate sign. I didn't think people would see that, right? I thought they would see it judgmentally, so we changed the name. Pisces is all about, it doesn't matter, just let it go. It doesn't matter, let it go. All Pisces love the water. They love to be fluid. Whatever is going to happen, whatever, whatever. But if I tell them, you know, if you don't pay $5 to the bank by now, you're going to lose your house, and they go, oh, I'll get there. You know, that's not fluid. That's stupid. Right? That's stupid. So there's a great difference, as you see with all of our signs. You listen to each of our signs too much and you're dead. 
you each one of our signs is I, I know what's happening don't list the rest of them you can't listen to any one of them they gotta all help each other like a committee but Pisces is beautiful about flowing and surrendering and that's why it doesn't have it does that's why they're known being backboneless uh, no no backbone they're not don't have any ambition that's the flip side of what they're really trying to say is I don't want to be ego driven anymore. I'm past that. And Aquarius and Pisces always say the same thing. I don't belong here. Well, I understand that. And they don't belong here. They belong to Uranus and they belong to Neptune. They belong to out there. But my God, you're in a body and you got to deal with it. So occasionally you will see a Pisces like George Harrison. He had his struggles too. Of course, he had Moon and Scorpio. But that whole "My Sweet Lord" type of song that he wrote, and you know, it goes to what flows on within you and without you. All the beautiful Beatles songs that he wrote that had to do with the flow. They're all about that. Surrendering to a higher power, but it's really hard to do. And the biggest mistake that Pisces make is built in. The biggest mistake is they try to get rid of the ego. And all these new age, age people losing their mind trying to pry out the ego with a pair of pliers. It doesn't work. You have to love the ego, then it dissipates. Then you have fluidity. When you're fighting the ego, there's no fluidity. There's you fighting the ego. Very complex story, isn't it? Very complex. So let me tell you a few bits about this. When I deal with clients, I look to see where, where they're stuck. I listen heavily for what's going on at their job. I listen heavily for are they down the basement clearing out the basement? Seriously. Down the basement, clearing out the basement is the part of the Pluto thing that's going on. And by the way, next week we'll be totally devoted to Pluto. I've written nothing but Pluto for 10 years. It makes me sick. But I need to do it again for people who have missed it. They don't have it in, they don't have it in perspective. They don't understand. They think that what we're going through is going to be over in a week. They don't understand that this is completely earth-changing, what we're going through now. It's era changing, humongous. So I'm going to be talking about where Pluto was in 1920 all the way through to now. And I'm going to focus in on December of 08 when Pluto moved into Capricorn and what it's meant, what it has meant since it went in in 08 into Capricorn, where it's going to stay till 2023. And why things are so heavy and why all this sex talk the last few days and people talk about sticking their tongue down somebody's throat is because Pluto and Mars are getting together the next few days. And those are the, the that's the two planets of rape. Heavy sexual or heavy handedness or heavy uh, taking over the other. So I'm going to be talking a lot about Pluto, what's going on and what I want to say to you about it is What's happening now is people do not understand what we're going through. They don't understand that, number one, the United States is going through a Pluto return in about three, well, 2022. We're close enough now. And that threatens to end the, to end the Federation, to end all the Republic. Because Pluto doesn't mess around. It's the final, it's the final say so. Are you using your energy right or are you abusing it? What does Pluto do? This is the secret. When you're messing up, what does Pluto do? It disconnects you from your dependencies, support. your support systems. When I look over here, it means I can't find the word, and Eliza tells me what the word is. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Ha ha, you just plugged into your support system, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and when I start losing, I'm going to worry. 
Why? Notice your friends who've been messing up in the last year. Notice your friends who've been messing up in the last eight years. They've all been gradually losing their support systems. No more money, no more couch to sleep on, no more house, no more job. Why? Oh, Pluto did it. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. Think. Do you, have you seen it? Left and right all around you? The reason it happens is this. There are times when the planets emerge and there are planets, times when they subside. And we are some lazy dudes. When the planets subside, we get real lazy and get on our iPhones and do all our things. But when the planets are intense, we have to act and respond to the challenge of evolution, and we're not too good at it. The reason you lose your connection to your support system is Pluto inside. Let's say it's happening to me. Pluto inside says to me, look, I've been trying to get your attention and I can't get your attention. Because every time I send a warning sign up to you, you push me down. You ignore it. You don't listen to me. I've been trying to tell you people all along, climate's in trouble. I've been trying to tell you, you're not listening. I've been trying to tell you Fukushima radiation. I'm telling you water's poison. I'm telling you serious stuff. And we're la de da, right? Large part. So we're going to be chopped off from our support system. Why? Because Pluto's trying to say to us, look, you have the power. Me, I'm Pluto. I'm your power. Listen to me. You won't listen to me? Well, we're going to stop listening to Bob. We're going to stop listening to Aunt Shirley. We're going to stop listening to this school. I'm going to cut you off from all your sorts systems support system, then you're going to end up with the dark night of the soul where it's just me and you. That's Pluto. And then you have to deal with your real power or you die. That's why that's Pluto's job. That's why Pluto rules the phoenix. You hit bottom, you come back up. That's where we're at as a world. And since we are the head of the world, I mean, that glorifies our ego, we are the head of the world. What hits the head, what hits the head rules the body. So remember, Pluto's in Capricorn for everybody on the planet, plus it's hitting the head. So you're already seeing signs in America that things have to get really bad before we organize this on ballot. So you're seeing wonderful things happen in many, many, many ways. So as it's getting worse. It's also getting better. Then we had this election. Oh my God. So, what I wanted to show you about Trump, as any on next week will be all about Pluto ad nauseum. Tell your friends that don't understand that this will be a crash course. And from then on, I could just say, go watch the video because I've talked about it so much. Now, I'm going to flip to Trump's chart. I'm going to show you what's happening. This is what I think. Okay, where is it? Here we go. All right. Here's Trump's chart. Do you all see it? Yeah. Okay. And you notice he's a Gemini with a moon and Sag. And he's got this overblown, powerful Mars and Leo, which is his... The trouble with Leo energy is the more pressure you put on it, the bigger they get. The more you criticize him, the bigger he gets. What other Leo qualities, negative Leo qualities? He's never wrong. The sky's green. The whole world says it's blue. He says it's green. He's doing that now. Looking for somebody to blame. But that's not the issue. The issue is right here. This is this Chiron. Chiron is a centaur. It's not an asteroid. It's between Uranus it's between Saturn and Uranus, not between Mars and Saturn like the asteroids are. It's called a centaur. He was discovered in 77. He has a lot of very advanced features about it, very complex planet. We call it a planet. But he represents your wound because he's called the wounded healer. The wound in Libra, we all got it somewhere. The wound in Libra 
is being unable to socialize. Being unable to be tactful with another, to treat them fairly. So what's going on with Mr. Trump, beside all his other issues, is this. Watch. Do you now see a chart inside a chart? Okay. Pluto has been, for the past couple years, Pluto has been at a right angle to that Chiron. See, it's 1454, 1500. Okay. Astrology largely works like a cross. When a planet is opposite, it's very stressful. When a planet is right angle, it's very stressful. When a planet's conjunct, same place, it's stressful. So for the past three or four years, Pluto has been going back and forth, back and forth, smashing and powering and trying, trying to uplift him past his weak spot. It's been trying inside of himself. He's been given opportunities to transcend these, his weakness, which is inability to socialize. And Uranus, Uranus is here. Uranus has been back here for a while. So he was getting hit with Uranus opposite and Pluto square. It went on seven times in the last three or four years. His Chiron kept being pounded on, pounded on. And when your Chiron is hit and you don't get it together, it can be calamitous. It's a good word, calamitous. So, what is Pluto trying to do? When your wound gets messed with in astrology, hi, Alki, you either go through dramatic changes and people come out of nowhere and they heal the thing. And it has to do with you having the courage to be honest about it and face it. That's how you succeed as a Scorpio. That's how you succeed. Is the, that's why Scorpios are so successful, because you can't pull the wool over their eyes. They look through, even with wool over their eyes, they still see it accurately. They're smart, incisive. He won't do it. He keeps going back to his dream world. I'm the king. I'm the best. Nobody loves women like me. Why well, I was thinking I love them more than you do. My God, what a thing to say. So Pluto keeps dogging that, chi that Chiron. Pluto keeps making the right angle to that Chiron. Right here, right here, right here. And now Look at the troublemaker. Here comes Mars. Here comes Mars. Watch on the 17th. There you go. Mars will be one degree away from Pluto. That is when Mars hits bank on it. That's when Mars triggers. When you have tension, and Mars comes along, hits that guitar string, kapow. This is Monday the 17th. That Mars has got, that Mars is setting up the era. It's setting up the situation where he's nearing his final, um, he's nearing his final opportunity to settle this problem. And Mars is going to come through, and Mars is going to decide for him, because it's going to trigger Pluto. And when Pluto gets triggered, what does Pluto do? Pluto decides. You have, you have used or you have abused. You know, it's the final report card. That's what I think. Now, I've seen too much in astrology. Elke can tell you, you know, when you try to rest on a formula in astrology, you're almost always wrong. He might slip through this, but I will guarantee you this. If he slips through this and he keeps functioning, he will be, he will have become less and less of a person. He will be more and more and more of a shell, an empty shell. I saw an apprentice, I read an article last night, a young man who was on apprentice a long time ago. And he said the Trump that he knows now is not the Trump that he was back then. That he had trouble with him back then, but it, that he's really devolved. 
devolved. So, why, why is this situation so strong with Mr. Trump? It's because of last September. Mr. Trump is the personification of the problem that's going on within all of us. That's why so many people are supporting him. Last September, Jupiter and Neptune opposed each other. And I wrote about it. You probably saw it. In the article, it's called Inspiration or Delusion. Which one do you want? You want to be inspired, Jupiter, Neptune? You want to be deluded? And people with strong Jupiter, Neptunes in their chart, they're usually one or the other or both. They're really inspired towards God towards oneness, towards loving, towards helping, towards boundlessness, or they're in delusions of grandeur. So I think that about the time that happened, Mr. Bernie came along, and a lot of people picked up the Bernie energy, which was the inspiration. Bernie was saying, it's not me. We have to get to work. Virgo answer. I'm not your leader. Let's get to work. Very real, but inspired. Trump comes along and, hey, you know, get on my back, and I'm big enough, and I'm, I know more than anybody in the Supreme Court, and I'm a better accountant than anybody, and I know more tax law, and I know all the women, and I love everybody, so get on my back. So he takes over, and what do fixed signs do? It's not He's a Gemini, which is not fixed, but it's as Mars and Leo rising. Like Mussolini. Fixed signs make people feel comfortable. Boy, Dad's got this. I don't have to worry. That's what they're doing. You see some of the pictures of people in this crowd, they're like, like they saw God. They didn't even talk about him as there was Jesus, now there's him. That's how they do. They're, 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 he's given them a way to stop. He's given them a way to temporarily transcend their own fighting in their own head. We don't have to fight anymore about political correctness. Hell with it. They're all crazy. Very dangerous when a fixed sign gets in charge. And I did a long newsletter on all the fixed signs through, through history, like Lenin and, and Hitler and so many that Fixed signs just sound so damn sure of themselves. And if you're a normal, wobbly person that kind of trying to figure things out, boy, it could just overwhelm you. And you have to have a very strong self-image to be able to reason through that. What are they saying now? I don't care how dirty he is. He's going to fix things. Well, you look to the evidence. What does he fix? Nothing. Six bankruptcies. They, now it's the delusion time. We don't care what's true. We're going to see what we want to see. We don't care. That's the flip side of Jupiter Neptune. That's the darkness, the dark side of Jupiter Neptune. I don't care what's there. You know, it sure looks like a damn train. It looks like a train, but it ain't no train. It ain't no train. Nancy, it's not a train. Boom. So that's what's going on. So. Where's his progressed son? I can't remember. Um, I think, yeah, the progressed son is crossing the ascendant. That's what's caused him to come into such fame. His progressed son is going over um, the last part of cancer and into Leo and over that Mars. Mm. That's what's caused it. But mm. you've, got to, you've got to remember and keep this in mind with all of astrology, which is why I'm so interested in this next book. He's symbolic. Yes. How many years was he yapping around? And, you know, he did re amateur wrestling and all that stuff. Nobody took the guy seriously, and all of, a all of a sudden he comes to the forefront. He was the manifestation of the dark side of Jupiter Neptune. Why didn't we go with Bernie? 
not because Hillary fixed things. We didn't go with Bernie because we don't have our positive side together enough yet. We're starting to, we're working on it, which is why Bernie planted his seed and moved, moved along. He had fulfilled his job of planting inspiration. In the midst of all this stuff, you see a very strong man hold to his ground, hold his ground with great dignity because up in his ninth house, he has, I believe, Jupiter and Pluto and Leo in the ninth house. And that's why he has never ending um, fight for people's dignity. You may not believe this, but what Bernie was, was the higher octave answer to LBJ. That's what he was. LBJ certainly had the lower vibe of, of Virgo, but he did get Medicare started and Medicaid. He worked for the people and then 51 years later comes along Bernie and tries to take it to a higher degree. But by that time, he's dealing with a very corrupt media, a corrupt system. He's telling us directly what he's dealing with. Okay, so we got about 10 minutes left. I'd like to open it to questions. And what I will do is turn off the recording because I don't think all people on uh, YouTube need to see the questions. I'll say good night to them and open to your questions.